we are going to learn about insulin insulin is a hormone associated with energy abundance as it is produced and secreted by pancreas let's have a look into physiological anatomy of the pancreas pancreas is a heterocrine gland which means that it has both exocrine and endocrine tissues the exocrine tissues are SNI that makes about 90% of pancreas. These SNI secrete digestive juices into the duodenum by pancreatic duct. The endocrine portion of pancreas are the islet of Langerhans that makes only 10% of pancreas. These islets consist of alpha cells which secrete glucagon. You can remember that because there is an A in glucagon and there is an A in alpha cells. There are beta cells that secrete insulin. Then there are delta cells which secrete somatostatin. And there are few PP cells which secrete pancreatic polypeptide. So in general, insulin is a hormone that decreases blood glucose concentration. So its stimulus is hyperglycemia. While glucagon is the exact opposite. It increases blood glucose concentration, so its stimulus is hypoglycemia. Here is a table showing normal values of blood glucose in fasting and postprandial states. Insulin is synthesized by the beta cell of pancreas by usual cell machinery of protein synthesis. Beginning with the translation of insulin messenger RNA by ribosomes to form pre-pro-insulin. Pre-pro-insulin is then cleaved in endoplasmic reticulum to form pro-insulin consisting of three chains of peptides A, B and C. Most of pro-insulin is further cleaved in Golgi apparatus to form insulin. Insulin is a small peptide and it composes of A and B chain connected by disulfide linkages and the C peptide chain that is called connecting peptide. C peptide is important because it can be measured in insulin-treated diabetic patients to determine how much of their own natural insulin they are still producing because exogenous insulin lacks C-peptide. Insulin is packaged and stored as small secretory granules. Insulin has major effect during the fed state because after we eat, there are many macromolecules running through our intestines such as glucose, amino acids and fatty acids. From intestines, these macromolecules are absorbed into the blood. The pancreatic beta cells are sensitive to blood glucose concentration. Their membrane contain large number of glucose transporters known as GLUT2. GLUT2 transporters are significant in that Wherever they are in the body, they do not require insulin for their activity. These GLUT2 transporters allow glucose influx at a rate that is proportional to blood glucose concentration. Once inside the cell, glucose is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate by this enzyme glucokinase. Glucose 6-phosphate then undergoes the whole metabolic pathway of glycolysis that converts it into pyruvate, acetyl-CoA, then Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation by electron transport chain generating energy in the form of ATP. On the cell membrane of beta cells there are ATP sensitive potassium channels. As ATP binds to these potassium channels the efflux of potassium is inhibited resulting in accumulation of potassium ion inside the cell. Higher intracellular potassium concentration depolarizes the cell membrane that opens the voltage-gated calcium channels that are sensitive to changes in membrane potential. This effect produces an influx of calcium ions. Calcium links the synaptoproteins of secretory granules to the synaptoproteins of cell membrane, stimulating the fusion of vesicles and secretion of insulin by exocytosis. To initiate its effect, insulin first binds and activates its membrane receptor on target cells. Insulin receptor is a combination of four subunits, two alpha and two beta subunits. Alpha subunits lies entirely outside the cell membrane, while beta subunit 
penetrates through the membrane protruding into the cytoplasm these two subunits are held together by disulfide linkages there is a tyrosine kinase attached to beta subunit as insulin binds with alpha subunit on the outside of cell the portion of beta subunit protruding into the cell becomes autophosphorylated this autophosphorylation of beta subunit activates the tyrosine kinase which in turn causes the phosphorylation of multiple other intracellular enzymes including a group called insulin receptor substrate IRS activation of IRS causes many intracellular effects of insulin in different tissues of our bodies following are some of the main effects of IRS stimulation in different target tissues in liver there are glut 2 transporters on cell membrane which means that it is independent of insulin as it was on pancreatic beta cells as liver cells uptake glucose from blood during the fed state insulin causes increased activity of enzyme glucokinase glucokinase causes initial phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate phosphorylated glucose cannot diffuse back through cell membrane so glucose is temporarily trapped inside the liver cells this undergoes glycolysis to release energy that can be used by cell insulin also increases the activity of enzyme glycogen synthase which is responsible for polymerization of monosaccharide units of glucose to form glycogen molecule after liver glycogen concentration reaches up to a certain level further glycogen synthesis is stopped all the additional glucose is then available to form fat glucose split into pyruvate in the glycolytic pathway converted to acetyl coa and then into triglyceride triglycerides are released into the blood as very low density lipoproteins and stored in adipose tissues as triglycerides insulin inactivates liver phosphorylase which is the principal enzyme that causes breakdown of glycogen back into glucose in muscle cells the glucose transporters are glut 4 transporters that are present in the form of vesicles inside the cytoplasm glut 4 transporters are insulin dependent insulin increases the translocation of glut 4 transporter from intracellular storage deposits to the cell membrane which in turn facilitates the diffusion of glucose into the cell inside the cell glucose undergoes glycolysis to produce energy that is going to be utilized by the cells glucose will be stored as glycogen that can be used later for energy in addition to that in muscle cells insulin stimulates transport of many amino acids into the cell insulin turns on ribosomal machinery and increases the translation of messenger rna thus forming new proteins in adipose tissues there are glut 4 transporters for glucose entry into the cell insulin promotes glut 4 translocation in fat cells in the same way that it promotes glucose transport into the muscle cells this glucose is used to synthesize minute amount of fatty acid but most of the fatty acid is taken up by blood rest of glucose is converted into glycerol glycerol combines with fatty acid to form triglycerides insulin inhibits the action of hormone sensitive lipase that is the enzyme that causes hydrolysis of triglyceride into fatty acid so in summary insulin causes increased glucose uptake by the cells increased breakdown of glucose to form energy and then storage of glucose in the form of glycogen proteins and triglycerides as an energy reserve